Hello class, uh, Western Civ, this is your last week of doing um, work other than the exam that you'll have uh, um, next week. And it's, you're not going to see lectures um, by me. Um, the, I just have these little clips and these two big documentary chunks that I am expecting um, notes on. You know, I make that all clear in the instructions and <clears throat> I just think this is a very um, crucial set of topics that we're going over I changed them from being due on uh, Thursdays to everything's going to be due on Sunday but I don't want you to just put everything off until Sunday I want you to take this time to reflect upon the information that's in these clips and um, you know, I, I think, I mean, right now, I could have approached this in many different ways. But what I wanted you to see is this. Okay, so I have a clip on fascism. We didn't actually cover fascism in our set of definitions, if you remember. Um, and then we have um, populism. And then I'm having you go over... Um, the state of Europe and the issues that are taking place over immigration and refugee crisis and all that. And talking about the rise of the right. Um, and I, I have a clip from uh, an African and then my last clip uh, with the opening of Casablanca. And I, I want you to understand that I'm put, trying to put a context into everything and I'm wanting you to look at different angles. So just right off the bat, <clears throat> I will say that maybe it's less straightforward is when I have the African leader speaking to Macron, I want you to see that the African leaders and other leaders are aware of this refugee crisis as well and have their own thoughts on it. And um, I, I also want you to, to be aware that while people throw the term fascism as loosely around as they do socialism and communism, meaning it's usually a pejorative term that you don't agree with your political enemy, and then you say, that guy's fascist, or you say he's a socialist or a communist. Um, often people misuse those terms. Uh, and often what is called a fascist is a populist. But there's a thin line there. And and as the documentary, I mean, as the little video clip shows, a left-wing person can be a, uh, a populist as well. And um, so I just kind of want you to see uh, where this is. is um, I just want you to be more precise in understanding kind of what we're dealing with. Now, um, I, I'm also hoping that what you've learned in this class, as you can see why... Somebody from the political far, like from, from the right, not necessarily the far right, but just the political right, would look at everything like, let's say, the Democrats do or the left as socialist, and then they just kind of, why they would call them communist, even if they're not. I want you to also understand why people from the left spectrum or liberal spectrum would refer to something in the conservative or the right wing camp as fascist. Um, and when I say understand, meaning often people are mislabeling things, but at the same time, there's a there is a reason why they're putting these terms in there. And uh, you can see that, that fascism takes many, many ideas coming from the political right spectrum. And communism takes many from the, from the left spectrum. And sometimes it's not a perfect fit. Sometimes there's a little bit of both being mixed in there. Now, just to quickly say, um, I don't know if I addressed this before. Um, it's, it's trendy right now in the vlogosphere to, to, to say that... that um, Hitler was a leftist and because it was called the National Socialist uh, uh, that they were socialists but you really need to understand that he was using that label to actually manipulate the population because socialism was popular into his brand of ultranationalism and that as we learned he was like massively anti-communist and by default he really was anti-socialist in the leftist form now there is a uh, uh, a, a right-wing intellectual during the time named uh, Julius Evola, okay? 
And he wrote a, a work called uh, something like a critique of a Nazism from the right. And he basically criticized Nazis for not being right wing enough. Um, my point is, is that the political right understood that Nazism came from the right. Okay. Um, so I just want to make that very clear. But at the same time, just because you're right wing doesn't mean that you're a Nazi. Okay. Right. Just as if you're left wing doesn't mean that you're a Stalinist or a communist. So I just want to remind you of, of this. And, and what I'm hoping is, is that I've used, you've watched these videos and as you think about what's going on, you will also make a better political discussion take place because in America, they're just, it's ridiculous. And I, I watch a lot of both spectrums from, from AM radio to the vlogosphere and the political right misrepresents liberals and the left uh, ex excessively. But it goes the other way around. And I think that if we're going to take political positions and we're going to look at history, come on, let's get it right, okay? At least get our terms right. Let's get our history right so that at least whatever position we're taking, it's going to be a more developed. Uh, uh, it's just going to be better. Now, I really am wanting you to pay attention very carefully to this because the topics that I'm having you, this is what's so crucial to what's happening in the world right now. We are in a very critical time politically, a type of crisis. Things can blow up and get really ugly fast. And I'm wanting you to understand what is emerging and what's going on, okay? And... Um, I realize that there's many more different perspectives I could uh, show in documentary clips on what's happening in the world. Um, there are many videos that show uh, really extreme and negative examples of what the refugee crisis and immigration has been doing to Europe. That's out there. Okay, so I told you, I, you know, I am not naive about any of these things, and I'm also in the discussions, not expecting you to take any position that I might take. But I wanted you to see, I want you to understand something. When you watched, when, when, when we, we went over about the rise of, of Hitler or Mussolini or some leaders, throughout my childhood, people say, well, well how could those people let that happen? How, how could so many good people let bad things happen? Um, well, it's because when you're in the middle of something, you don't necessarily know, you're not, you're, not, you're not looking at it after the fact. You're in it. And I guess I just want us to be more sober-minded and reflect upon, like, what, what, what should we be doing? And I just want to say this. This is my real, I want to out this part of my politics. I'm convinced that we're, be, we're given a false set of alternatives. We're given a lot of either or uh, uh, political choices as if there's not something else in between. And this is creating uh, uh, people being forced to, to take positions that maybe they wouldn't if they were thinking about uh, the fact that there's, there's, there's another alternative. And so in a sense, we're kind of all getting pushed into ideological spheres. Uh, because there's seeming to be no nuance, no, nothing to kind of a, like address an alternative possibility to some sort of, you know, tension that's taking place, right? And, um, you know, maybe somebody or a movement or something can, can break out of this false dich set of dichotomies. I don't know. But uh, that's all I'm going to say about this right now. Um, so... Uh, get a, in contact with me if you need anything and um, I'm looking forward to your quality discussions remember I said it's sensitive I want you to feel free to kind of say what you want to say but it really needs to be I, come on we're, we're grown ups you know this is my class it's a safe place for my students so there's a balance between make, people feeling like that they can have a debate if, if need be and just attacking somebody or saying things that are vicious or malicious, okay? Um, so um, I will monitor it if I think it, it, it goes over that, um, it goes over the edge. Um, hopefully that we can, we can find a nice balance between freedom of speech and civility within the classroom, okay? So um, that's all I have to say. Have a great week and stay cool. It's hot even up here in Portland, man.